Welcome to the Empower Now Podcast. It's your host, Reggie White, and I got something really special for you all today. I'm joined by my co-host, Namir Branch, and we got an awesome guest that goes way back where with me, back in my PG County days. Um, but we're really excited to kick off season four. Um, we are back and better than ever. Um, a lot of things that we got on the docket this uh, season is going to be really impactful and special. And we're hoping that it can just be something that resonates with you. Um, before we go any further, I will start with a prayer. Then I'll turn over to Namir. And then we're going to uh, introduce Josh. And we're going to have an awesome time together on this episode. The series that we're kicking off here in season four to start strong is Walk by Faith, Not by Sight. Ultimately, what it comes down to when we think about this life is being able to do what we need to do. But man, remembering that when we become in this kingdom of Christ, it's not about seeing it to believe it. It's not about having all the answers. It's really about being able to let his will be done and not ours. So we got to start learning how to remove self out the equation. So we're going to hopefully do the best we can to do this series justice and kind of do it in the way that he would have us to do it. So with that, if you could bow with me as I pray. Lord, I am so grateful for what you're doing. Um, you know the challenges that we've been working through as we've been working to try to record this episode. And I am not a uh, believer in coincidence, Lord. I have full belief that you have a set purpose for this episode, a set purpose for this podcast. And for whoever's listening, Lord, I pray that this can be a confirmation for them that there's something greater on the inside that's either been tugging or pulling or resting. And Father, I pray that you can be able to move like never before in this individual's life or individual's lives. Father, I just thank you for uh, you bringing me together with Namir and Josh. I pray that you can be able to bless this conversation. I pray if there's any distractions or discouragement or doubts, whatever it is that may be a hindrance of you getting the glory, I pray that you can remove it out the um, atmosphere, Lord. Help us to be what you're calling us to be and give us the right words to speak, to enunciate, to elaborate on whatever it is that you're having for us to say. I pray that we can say it and to leave it all out there, Father, so somebody can get you and get Christ in their life. I'm so grateful for what you're doing and what you're going to do. I pray that this can be a beautiful beginning to this awesome new series and season that we have here in season four. In your name I pray. Amen. All right. Amen. Amen. I'm going to turn it over to my awesome, my awesome, <laughs> I'm going to turn it over to my awesome uh, co-host, Namir. Um, he can set the stage too and then turn it over to our awesome guests. But again, uh, welcome to season four. This is the Navigating Faith in a New Age Society episode. All right. What's up, y'all? We in season four, let's get it. So we have a treasure today. We have a jewel. We have the incomparable, the amazing Joshua Lee, the kindest soul out here alive. Um, Josh is the coolest, most down to earth, most intellectual, educated, kindest, compassionate, gentlest, but strong type of person ever that you could ever met. Um, I know Reggie always has stories. I have a story for Josh too. I never forget when Josh was in Maryland and we was hungry, you know what I'm saying? And we was like, Josh, we hungry, we ain't got nothing to eat. And Josh swiped his car with a piece of man a whole state away. You know what I'm saying? Like, Josh is really that guy. And now he's that guy in the entrepreneurial space. And he has so many more endeavors and other things that we're super excited to get into. So, without further ado, Mr. Joshua Lee, what, what's going on, my guy? Man, it is a pleasure to be here, fellas. I just want to say, you know, this is my first podcast that I've ever been on. I've produced actually three. Um, and so... To be on this side of it is not only an honor and a privilege, but it's it's another another perfection of the craft. You know, when, you, when you're committed to, to, you know, seeing your gifts grow and helping others and growing your faith, you never know where you'll end up. And it's, ironically enough, it's nice to be on on this side of the journey versus behind the scenes with the camera. So, again, y'all, it's a pleasure to be here, and I'm, I'm more than excited to, to share just a little bit of my story and my, my faith journey with you all. Awesome, man. Awesome, awesome. And uh, I've known Josh uh, since the 2010s, man. Josh was uh, rocking out with us when I was at Flowers, and he's always been that guy to the mirror's point. So I'm excited to have him on the on the podcast with us. So uh, the first thing I want to do, kind of set the stage of us talking about navigating faith, especially in this new age society, like the 2020s. Like, uh, What I would love to start with, Josh, is talk to the listeners a little bit about what it means to be a, a entrepreneur in the 2020s, but also what it means to be about your business and your father's business as a Christian, as an entrepreneur in the 2020s. Absolutely. I think um, this, this is always a, a great way to start because, you know, a lot of people would think that the, that the two subjects are different. You know, it's like it's kingdoms and it's church and it's faith, which can be its own world. 
and then you have entrepreneurship and business and punctuality and cussing people out when they're not doing their job as, as a whole other world. But as we know about, you know, Paul and his journey as a, as a leader, uh, what we know about Jesus flipping over tables, it, 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 it goes hand in hand. And so for my own personal experience, um, you know, just, just, you know, almost celebrating three years as a, you know, legitimate certified um, LLC owner in North Carolina, um, you know, my, my journey started off with not an idea, but with a conversation with the Lord. Um, I remember being in church, you know, two, two, three and a half years ago at this point, I'm um, just hearing sermons around your gifts make room for you, your gifts make room for you. Um, and at the time, I'm like, this is a great sermon. You know, it's, it's good for my spirit. It's good for my soul. I got, okay, Lord, I got some gifts. All right, let me keep it pushing. You know, it wasn't until weeks went by that the Holy Spirit um, kept bringing back to my memory. Okay, like, you know, you know, you got gifts, Josh. You know, you're called to do certain things and, you know, you're talented in these areas. Uh, are you going to do anything with these gifts? I'm like, wow, well, gifts. <laughs> and so I, I, I literally just talked to the Lord about it. And I said, Lord, if, if you have gifted me, what, what are those gifts? And if I do anything with it, I just want to be legitimate. And so the Lord, you know, took me down memory lane, you know, in my prayer. And he reminded me of all the things that I did, you know, in, in middle school, learning about, you know, radio and radio frequencies and how people communicate on telecoms. Um, you know, going back to flowers, when um, for my electives, I decided to, you know, pick up journalism and learn the ins and outs of, you know, television production, which is the name of the class at the time. Shout out to Miss Jones. Um, and then, you know, fast forwarding to, to, to college, well, an internship my senior year high school, and then getting a minor in college in, in journalism, you know, majoring in, you know, biomedical engineering. It's like the, the fields are so polarizing, but it's still in me. <laughs> so this conversation I have with the Lord happened, you know, in my mid-20s. You know, I'm out of school, you know, five years out of school at this point, you know, starting my career, you know, getting to the bag. And the Lord is like, hey, like, you know, do you remember when you did these things? Do you remember when you started, you know, the, the production ministry in Greensboro? And we had a local internship um, in Prince George's County. Uh, it's called CTV. People that, that may want to do a little research, um, community television um, but but mind you like those those reminders were always there it just was inspired and reminded you know through conversations with with the holy spirit in my personal time and my, my response to that was if if i do anything i just want to be legitimate i don't want to get into this profession to, to sound cool and to say i'm an entrepreneur and i got a business and Look at me, I'm a you know top dog because I got a career. Like that in the business, that that was never my MO. And that response was met with, again, if I do anything, I want to be legitimate. And that was met with, okay, legitimate. If you do it, you gotta file a logo, excuse me, you gotta file your LLC or a variation of a business, because that that's the foundation of good, legitimate business. You gotta get a website, you gotta get a logo. You gotta get your branding together. You know, it's like all, all of that went into my process as an entrepreneur, but it was truly inspired by my relationship with God. And then, you know, and then the clients, and then the gifts to be confirmed, and then having my first client who, you know, it's I knew it was God because I was nervous to shoot. I was I was asked to um I was hired out to do <clears throat> like a, a branding shoot for a lady who was also starting a business um, in cosmetics. You know, she was a black black woman. Um, and she just, she said, this is what I want. I hope you can catch the vision. I'm not mad either way if it doesn't come together, but this is what I would like to see. Um, so I had an opportunity to show her the finished product after the fact, and she had tears in her eyes. And that was just a confirmation for me, you know, after being nervous and after stepping out on faith and after, you know, going through this path of trying to be legitimate, that it all like doubled down and the gifts that God was telling me about was confirmed in that moment because I was scared and I was nervous and I didn't know what to do next. I just knew 
what I knew from the past and what worked good and see if I could <laughs> do it all over again. So it's, it's just a blessing knowing that for me, you know, I can't say the same thing for a lot of people, but, but for me, you know, being an avid believer and not just, you know, having faith in God, but implementing that in my own personal life and making decisions about business and about investments, um, about traveling based on, you know, my, my walk with God. So long, long, long answers to your question, but it's, they go together as far as I'm concerned. They're, they're not separate. Yeah, no, pow, pow. Uh, quick question to Rich. Uh, so Josh, I know a lot of people are in the same boat and a lot of people are very gifted and everybody's trying to pinpoint, like how did you get to pinpointing photography? Now, I understand that you said God basically highlighted your skill set and I know you like, you a man of talent, so I know you got like 30 of them How did you get there? Right, but the person that's listening and trying to figure out what their sweet spot is. Yeah. Sure. I mean, I, I, think, I think there's a simple answer for that. And I think the world would have you think that it's complicated and the reality is what's something that you're naturally good at that you enjoy doing I mean it's it's, it's as simple as cool. what's a gift God, something that God gave you that if you want to do it or want to use it or don't want to use it or you, you, you're skillful at it or not you're still good at it <laughs> like what, what the Bible say? The gifts of the Lord come without repentance. Wow. Like when you when you, when you got when you got the goods, whether you use it for you know self gratified like Lucifer did, or whether you use it like Jesus did to you know edify the kingdom and give that back to the Lord, it doesn't matter how you use it because it's, it's in you. So for people that struggle with what am I called to do or what are my gifts, stop over complicating that. Look inside yourself, and the answer is already there. <laughs> Believe it or not. <laughs> oh. Um. Wow, I'm taking this all in because this is really relevant. And um, for whoever's listening, when we talk about like navigating faith in a new age society, um. I don't know why our generations, like every time we always think things are brand new, but things aren't new under the sun. Like the ways of humankind are not new. And um, transparently, I was reading through uh, the Bible yesterday and was really kind of watching the story of, you know, when Moses was delivering his people and they started really going through this journey to get to the promised land. And it was a generation that was uh, ungrateful. And God did so much that brought them through through Egypt and they were wanting to go back to Egypt and getting getting manna coming from the sky and no appreciation. And like I thought I started thinking to myself, that's the new age society. That's us. That's I'm guilty of that too, of being ungrateful sometimes or expecting God to make a way when he's doing it every single day. And I was like really convicted as I was reading. I was like, man, Lord, let me not be like them. Let me not not be able to be a generation that has to die out because I didn't have the belief, because I didn't have the favor, because I didn't follow your way. So whoever's listening, like what Josh is saying, and even to the question that Amir just had is so powerful and relevant because we have so many things at our fingertips in this generation. We want things so quick and um, we almost are numb to miracles. And what I mean by that is, is we try to make a way on our own behalf in our own way. And we forget that God is the one that decides promotion. We can't manipulate our way to the next opportunity. We can't like talk our way out because like I've also been thinking through this too. Like we can say all these great things under the sun would be far from God and not have a heart that's near God. And God doesn't want us to come across one way, but to be another way in reality. So whoever's listening, um, I would just say we got to really make sure that our intentions are real and that if we're saying we're going to go after this walk, like true when you navigate faith and grow, is it, there's a process. Like sanctification is a process. Like I don't care who you are. There is no, as long as we are on this side of life and having this flesh, our thoughts, our mind, our flesh is wicked. And it's a battle every single day. There are things that you know you want to do that you know you shouldn't do. And you have to fight and you have to be about your father's business. So like, I'm just saying that to say that there is no perfection. There's no arriving, right? And that's where the blood of Jesus makes us white. Thank God for the blood of Jesus, because if we were honest with ourselves about some of the thoughts that come to our mind or some of the things we're struggling with and some of these things we don't want people to know, but God knows, but that's the beauty of Christ because he makes us, we can't save ourselves. I'm sorry, I'm going on a tangent. I don't want to dominate this, but it's just really important to say this point because like you can't redeem you. That's where Christ comes in. So my next question 
when we talk about navigating faith in new age society, Josh, like take us through from your perspective, kind of what those aha moments as you were walking in this, right? Like walking in this business and you know, you were trusted with this, right? Because he wasn't going to just give it to you. Like, how did you start getting to that point where you knew like, man, this was an assignment from Christ. Like this was given to me. And I, with this assignment, you know, that there's challenges that come with it. Talk us through that for the listeners, because it's not all sunshine and rainbows having your own thing. No, absolutely. You know, I think um, I think for me personally, again, it's it's about the journey itself. So my journey in entrepreneurship didn't start with didn't start three years ago um, when I, I reached out and I launched or I started doing research. It happened, you know, as a kid in Bible study. You know, developing a stronger foundation. You know, working with other pastors and leaders, getting getting rooted and grounded, you know, in, in humility and in service and the things that people will consider to be a, a thankless job or, you know, service, service in that regard, to be honest. Um, with, with that in mind, my journey, again, started with working with, you know, a series of pastors that were able to pour into me. Um, that in turn (laughs) turned into a lot of late nights you know studying you know working in ministry organizing church services starting a campus ministry um you know on on down to not going to parties having to study you know being held accountable and then vice versa holding other people accountable it's you know it's not one particular thing it's the, the journey itself and what that's, you know, translated into, you know, currently in 2023, almost 2024, is accountability. Okay, if, if I'm able to serve under somebody, then somebody can, can work under me in my business. If I'm willing to stay up late to commit myself to, you know, a craft or to, to leadership, then, you know, the, the same form of accountability, it, it's, it's the same for me. I may not be a, a pastor, I may not be a bishop or a deacon, but I'm a leader in my community. I'm a leader in my career. You know, I'm a leader in the world of, of ER, employee resource groups at the company that I work for. I'm a leader, you know, in my community where I'm at now, knocking on doors and giving out cookies and saying, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm an avid member in this community. I want to show, you know, love and support. And again, that, that didn't start you know, when I became an adult. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, the, the, this is how the saying goes. Life is composed of decisions. The more decisions, the better the decisions you make, the better the life is, the better your life will be. You know, you make bad decisions as a kid, you continue to make bad decisions as, a, as an adult, like, your life will reflect that. And so, you know, the way, the way I look at it is, you know, I love my family. You know, I, I commit myself to being, you know, honest and true. Um, I honor my mother and my father. You know, I hope my days are all on earth. But again, I say all I have to say, it's, it's the lifestyle and the decisions that I've made that have allowed me to experience, you know, freedom that have caused me to stray away from sin. You know, struggle at times, of course. But again, constantly striving to make better decisions has allowed me to be able to hear God's voice, hear it clearly, and to take steps when, when things are scary. You know, so it's, again, it's a combination of, you know, what decisions am I making now? What decisions have I made in my past that have allowed me to, to see this form of success as, as an adult? And so, and I, I can be specifics as a, as a kid, you know, I got whoopings because I was lying, and you know. <laughs> um, and, and then I, I can give you, you know, examples when I was, you know, serving in campus ministry, and I was getting rebuked, you know, because I was fooling around, being messy, you know. And so it's again because of you know that honesty. I mean, what the Bible says: worship in spirit and in truth. You know, if you're not striving and working out your, your own soul salvation, you know, your soul, and then being honest with yourself and being honest with God, then, you know, I think those those two things go hand in hand. And if, you, and if you're not working on those things, 
working on your soul, praying, reading your word, take the time your body. If you're not being honest with yourself, you know, try to deceive other people, you know, in denial, instead of working on, you know, the fundamental things or the traumas. I mean, I think all, all of that's real. But, you know, again, I would say, you gotta, you gotta make good decisions every day. And that's personal, that's spiritual, that's mental, that's physical. And we all, we all know what that thing is. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, because it's not the same for you, Ray. It's not the same for you, Namir. It's not the same for me. But at the end of the day, you know, we all, who, you know, who are believers, who, you know, who got the Holy Spirit. Jesus, Jesus job is done. God's job is done. We got the Holy Spirit. You know, for those that, that are journey with God or striving to, to work on their relationship with God, you know, boil, boil it down. You know, you don't have to conquer the world. You don't have to conquer <laughs> your job, you don't have to change careers and move to a whole other state to feel like you're becoming something. No. You make you make small good decisions. In our case small godly decisions. You know, every day. And then in turn, you know, you start to see your life change. And that and that, that to me is that to me is just the bread and butter. <laughs> you know, but if that Rome wasn't conquered overnight and I feel like neither neither is success. Oh. You know, in the eyes of the world and, and, and in the eyes of God. And it's not... I, I, I'm with you, Rich, but I also think that, you know, as, as believers and as, you know, new age, that it's so easy to put the work and the responsibility on God that we never look at ourselves and say, what work should we be doing? You know, and it's, it's and this this whole school and this school say, you know, if it be the Lord will, God, if it be your will, let it happen. If be your will, don't let it happen. And God looking down like, uh, I said, my son, you already saved. Your name is written in the last book of life. I've given you the Holy Spirit. I've given you power to trade upon serpents. I've given you my blood. I've given you the arm of God. I've given you everything you need to change the world that you live in. So why are you looking back at God putting the blame on him when you have a responsibility to change that? And, that's, and I, I live by that, bro. I don't live by that. And if, and if I'm not doing my part to change you know, myself and consequently changing the environment around me, then it, it's a missed opportunity for heaven to come down and for God to move. And, and for others to experience what this real faith like, faith walk looks like. I mean, everything, everything, bro. My house, my houses, my car, everything in the house, my business. I, I give all of that back to God, you know, because I, I can acknowledge the fact that when I didn't have, God was faithful. Now that I do have, God is faithful. When I didn't have again, <laughs> you know, God is still to stay the same. And instead of losing like hope and losing faith and giving up on, you know, my process and just saying, forget it. It's like, no, that's, that's when your character gets built up. That's when those fruits of the spirit start being cultivated, and you know, and then that's when you start to produce like some some real fruit that people can see and experience. And then it's like, whoa, your witness is real. Like, you you tight, bro, because you you got you come from a little something. You got you got life experience mm-hmm. that's inspired by God, but that's but it's, it's still life, you know. All right, I'm, I'm gonna pass it over. So I saw you, man. Let's let's keep doing this conversation, bro. <laughs> okay, because I'm like, I'm my spirit is like, bro, inspire me. Um, <laughs> what, what I love what you said, what both of you guys have said, which I'm all about full circle moments and simplification, especially now. Uh, what I love about what you both said is, is basically just that, like Josh, you're saying that it's very much Romans 8 20, 29. All things work together for the good of those that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. And then Reggie is saying, like, we are just living in today's society and, you know, we're inundated constantly with a whole bunch of information. And the whole theme of this whole thing, which is crazy, because I've been studying judges myself. And every time I'd be seeing, I'd be like, dang, like, God sent this judge. And immediately after they died, they they do what, you know, in sight of the Lord. It's like, dang, now you think, now that you know God, then God sent somebody else. And it's like, dang, this, like, I'm like, my God, like, what is happening? But the crazy thing about all of it, like, Central, is that, like, they have forgotten. And so with us living in today's society with all this new age stuff, 
it's like we're constantly inundated with so much information that we forget what God has done and we see all these new practices and now we see yoga and this and that and third and even like oh I forgot I'm supposed to be praying because I'm still scrolling or you know I have this this sad this desire like to be on my phone or to be tethered to this thing and it's like you forgot what God has done for you or like you forgot who you're serving and that's what happened with them and I think it's so crazy because even back in their time like there was a lot of statutes that God gave like to kill people off like don't marry with this person don't even connect to these people and they didn't do it and when they didn't do it slowly but surely it started changing their sense of normalcy and as a byproduct of that they started slipping into sin and get into these habits and these pagan practices that were contrary to their belief system altogether. And so even with that, it's just like, even navigating today's society, like it behooves us to stay in that point posture of reflection, of remembrance, and just remember like what you just said, like God brought me through this, God brought me through that. But even like through the snapshot of your life, like throughout my entire, it didn't just start when I crossed the entrepreneurial threshold. Like this started since conception. This started since I was born. This started in my childhood. And ever since that point forward, like this is what's happening. And it's crazy because a lot of times, too, when we do step into these new roles and these positions, we forget all the stuff or Satan makes us forget about all the stuff like you shared about, you know, working in these different capacities. And then now you're an entrepreneur and you're looking for those people that you, you know, were in previous seasons. And a lot of people have that disconnect because we'd be thinking like, oh, well, you know, I'm just starting now. I don't need somebody like that. But it's like, but you was just doing that for somebody. You were just in that space. If you need the same energy that you are just to this pastor, to this leader, to this person. But like we had that disconnect because we don't remember. Like our memory, our memory and our attention span is short. It's crazy. Can you talk about that, Josh? Like the yeah, what you about, bro? in this whole. I've been, I've been itching, bro. I've been itching the guy that's the back of <laughs> You know, it's it's you know we we talk about you know the new age and technology and social media and and how, how connected we are now. But the reality is, you had you had you had twelve disciples. Okay, yeah, twelve disciples that that walked with Jesus for for the later half of fifteen. You know, I'm around up to twenty years. And and the reality is that, is that they forgot. You know, we we're, we're reminded in the Word that if every miracle was recorded that Jesus did, you know, there there wouldn't be enough books in the, in, the, in the Bible. And so. You know, it's and then and then I actually heard this one this morning um, that there were two there were two instances that that Jesus fed the multitude. Um, you know, we're, we're familiar with you know the what the uh, two loaves, two yep, loaves of bread, fish. three fish. Thank yep, you, man. Five loaves. Um, yep. And a couple chapters later, and I think Matthew 16, 15 or sixteen, there was a whole another another series where he fed four thousand, four thousand, and you know, the disciples had the same response both times. Oh my God, how are we going to get all these people? Like, where are we going to get this food from? Like, a- as if they weren't there the first time. <laughs> right. So, so, you know, the, the remedy to that is, is the Holy Spirit. And, you know, the, the reality is not only do we have a, a comforter in the Holy Spirit and a gift that God, that Jesus sent us, but we have um, the privilege of empowering the Holy Spirit to work for us. And, and one of one of the Spirit's responsibilities is to bring everything back to memory. Everything back to memory. So that we, we don't forget. And, and mind you, like Jesus knew. That's, that's why communion was created. Like, do this in remembrance of me. Because we know y'all gonna forget. We know. You know but God knew too. Otherwise... When I said the Holy Spirit, there wouldn't have been, you know, a Jesus. There wouldn't have been a Moses. There wouldn't have been commandments and laws. Like there, there wouldn't have been monumental moments that have been recorded in history if we would have just remembered naturally. And so it's not, you know, New Age would say social media is a big distraction. But when Jesus was here, the disciples still missed it. And you know that that's why I gotta get the Holy Spirit so much credit. But back back to my story, I forgot. You know, the internship that I had, the work that I did at the church back in Greensboro, I, I you know, you move on, you start your, you start a whole other life outside of school, and you don't you don't forget on purpose, but you get busy. And it's not I, I would say it's not always a distraction, 
It's just the season that you're in and the focus that you have to put in to family, into your career, into establishing yourself, into getting reactivated to, to new communities. If you're moving, I mean, it's, I don't think, you know, we can always attribute life to negativity or to distractions because, you know, at 31, the time that I had at, at 21 is different. And so, you know, again, I, I, we just, we collectively have to continue to implore the Holy Spirit to work on our behalf because that's, that's, that's you know, that entity's job. Yeah, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Trinity. Mm -hmm. That Holy Spirit's job is to show us, to lead us, to guide us into all truth, um, to bring back to memory all things, and to help us navigate the world that we live in. Because Jesus ain't here no more, but we got, we got more than enough help. We got angels, you know, we got the word, we have access to so much knowledge and wisdom and information but if we don't employ the Holy Spirit, we don't become skillful. And I think that that's where we have, um, you know, mentorship is so important and leadership is so important. And that's, you know, I think that, that's where the old and the young should be working together. So we don't, so we don't forget when the wisdom and knowledge is passed down and the Holy Spirit is, is, is on both sides of it. You know? Yeah, yeah. There, there's a lot here. Whoever's listening, I really encourage you to to rewind back and press play again on some of this and to double click on it. Just because, as you guys have both been talking, I've been really taking this in myself and listening. Um, but I want to chime in on something else a little bit, just really quick. And if it takes a little longer. I apologize, but I promise this is relevant. Um, I think about what Paul said in Philippians about how he learned to be content in all seasons in life. And I think about even what you just said a moment ago, Josh, about how you said, "Look, I had nothing." And I got something and I got all these different things, but you know what it means to be appreciative and to be able to be a great steward over those things because you knew it where you came from and you know what you have now. So we got to get to a point in life where we can remember, just like we've been saying for the last almost five plus minutes here, where we were, where we came from, who we were and what God brought us from. And if you're on this journey or new to this journey, like we got to really think through and remember what we've been through. Because how we become content in all seasons of life is understanding that when we are getting through this life, we're getting through these struggles, we go over these challenges. Every challenge that you have in life has the same thing in common. Either it came and went, or you have the same thing you got to do over, or you overcame that challenge and you're on to a new challenge. Um, I had a guest that said something in a previous episode. She said, every new level comes with a new devil. But the point I'm, I'm making is we got to learn if we're going to get to that point where Paul got to about being content in all seasons and all walks of life is we got to be able to do things without grumbling and complaining. We got to be able to get through that really tough situation. But the other thing I want to say to kind of go back to what Joshua just saying a moment ago is I think the biggest challenge that we have and what, what makes us miss either the promise or have to get a new opportunity opened up and that we get to go through because we missed it, because we blew it, or because we weren't ready, is self. We let self get in the way. And I mean it in a bunch of different ways. I don't mean that just in a negative way. Self could be, I'm just trying to make it. I'm just trying to make these, this in me. I'm just trying to pay my bills. I'm just trying to survive. I'm not trying to ignore people or do the wrong thing. I'm just, I'm struggling. I'm trying to just get me right. Self could look like I want my way. I want to be seen. I want to be noticed. I want to be elevated. I want the kingdom. I want all these different things. Self could be, oh, they don't understand my struggle. So they can't relate because they can't relate. I'm just going to focus on me. Like self can be so many different things, but we get so caught up in self, self image, self promotion, self, whatever we get caught up in the whole social media hype. I got to make my life look awesome. Even though I know I'm struggling, like we got to remove self out the equation. That's what it means to die daily. Like I am truly learning myself, like what that looks like when it comes in terms of, Hey, uh, Reggie, this is some things you're struggling with. You need to not eat that. You need to not do this. You need to not do that. And like, we know what those nudges are. If, if we want to be honest with ourselves, even if you're somebody that's, that's finally coming to Jesus, or you're finally having this moment to change, you know what you struggle with. And I think we got to be honest with ourselves. There's times where we're we don't even try to lie. It's just we don't want to face into what we're really feeling or what we know we're struggling with. And it's like those nudges, if anybody doesn't know what we're talking about, with the Holy Spirit, those 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 moments where it's like, oh, I know this is wrong. or Oh, I know I need to change or I know something's off or that that emptiness you feel. And you're trying to fill it with whatever that substance can be, food, drug, drink, whatever, whatever you want to call your poison. Right. Like when we know what those gaps are. It's because the only thing that can fill us, that can really fill us, is his presence. And by when I say his presence, I'm talking about Jesus Christ. So I'm saying all this to say, 
Self is the biggest challenge. And everybody got their Goliath. Everybody has their thing that they're trying to work through. But the thing that I think we all can relate to is the challenge of self. Because there's times where you get this nudging and the Lord's telling you, you need to give that person some money. You need to support this person. You're saying, Lord, I don't know if I'm going to pay this. I don't know how I'm going to do this. How am I going to give this person $50? I'm going to give this person $100. How am I going to give this person my time? All of these different things. And we got to remember that this life, like when we think about our life, there is a set clock on this time under the sun, this time on earth. And like you were just saying, Josh, about decisions, that is really, really good about how life is full of decisions. Like we played the game life, right? We know what life is for any of those. That, and if I'm dating myself from line, life is a board game that you make decisions and things happen and outcomes happen. But you are playing that game right now in real life. And we got to stop thinking like these video games we play that we can just respawn and retry. That's not how this works. There is a dedicated decision that we have to uh, make and we have to make sure we're making the best decisions, the best we can. And but... The, the, the true answer, the true guide is the Holy Spirit. And I think that's where we got to make sure we got some right counsel around us. So, Josh, what I would ask another question, and then we're going to start landing this plane because we're burning time. This is so good. We might have to have you on something in the future, man. But the, the, the other thing I want to just talk through is when you talk about like this new age, there is so much temptation that comes with the new age and trying to fit in. What would you say to somebody that knows they need to make a change, that know they need to make a turn. And they're trying, but they're battling on their old man. Their old man is becoming more powerful, you know, than them becoming into that new man, that new creature, that, that new creation in Christ, right? Like, what would you say to somebody that's struggling? That could be somebody that's never walked this walk. That could be somebody that's like a prodigal son that um, fell off the horse and now coming back, or them fell off multiple times and trying to come back, but can't seem to find their way. What would you say to that person? Yeah, I think, I think this is, this is a great question, bro. And, I'm, I'm, I'm always give you simplicity. Um, if if you're struggling with with your new identity, or you're you're learning how to live again, you know it's. I think it's as simple as you know the, the moment that the prodigal son had when he's like, I'm, I'm a king and I'm privileged and I'm, I'm a king's kid, but I want to do my own thing. I want to live my life. I want to go to the streets. You know, I want to take all my money and do what I want with it. And, you know, I think the reality is we all have to come to the to the realization um, that you got to wake up. I mean, you got to... The, the Bible says when he came to himself, that's when he, he took the blinders off and he went back. You know, that, I mean... It's easy to give God the credit and to give the Holy Spirit the credit and to give that credit to good, having good parents and having good mentors. But the reality is that we all have to come to that moment ourselves. And, you know, I, I, it's, it's not a cliche answer, but, you know, I, I don't know what that looks like for, for the entire world. But what I do know about God is when you become born again, when you love the Lord, you become a new creature. And the only thing that changes in that moment is is your soul. It's your soul. You know? And then everything after that is the renewing of the mind. It's the, the change in the guards when it comes to how you process information. And, you know, the desires that you used to have, they, they can change. But I think one, you know, you gotta you gotta have that moment where you can come to yourself. And then two, you know. Again, another cliche answer, but you got to change your environment. I mean, I, you know, it's especially when it comes to the African American community and the systems that that have been put in place to keep, you know, us down as, um, you know, as as a culture, as a racial group. Um, that there are things that we have to do to not put the blame on externals and other people, and that and that to me is changing. You know where you go, changing your environment, what you listen to, how often you listen to it. Um, I mean, obviously, like the, the church helps, but <laughs> I mean, even above that, it's 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 fundamental. But reading the Bible, and I can't I can't explain it. But when you study the Word and you you know you meditate on it, the the desire is that. I used to have, and I know people can attest to, they, they change. And there's some 
it's magic in it, but it ain't no magic that I can just give people or show people. That's something that people have to experience themselves. So, you know, once you kind of come to yourself and realize that you got to make some better decisions, then you kind of start that journey around what can I do better? What decision should I make next? Who should I hang out with? Who should I not? Where can I go that I, I, that I don't have as much temptation? Where can I not? And then as you, you know, convene with the Holy Spirit, get in the Word, you know, your life, your life starts changing. And it may not, it doesn't happen overnight. I don't, I'm not going to say that, you know, you get saved and, you know, you don't want you don't want sin no more. You're not going to slip up no more. I mean, shoot, a righteous man fall seven times, but he get back up. He get back up. And, I, and that's why, you know, knowing the word is so important because there, there are principles that work. There are tools that you got to add to, to your toolbox, like the gifts of the spirit like understanding repentance you know knowing that there's power in agreement you know understanding that um we have tools like the arm of god that we can prepare ourselves with so that we're, we're ready for the battle and the temptations that are ahead i mean like those 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 principles and those those skills that i that i've added in my toolbox has allowed me to navigate life in ways that people don't even understand. You know, the world is, oh, it's just positivity. And oh my God, Josh, it's so positive. And you just have a great outlook. You know, you just, you don't let anything get to you. It's like, oh, if you only knew, I didn't even know what, I'm praying. And I put myself with the blood of Jesus because it works. And I, you know, I, I speak because, you know, we all have power. You know, and, and depending on where you are in your journey, you understand how to use your, your mouth. You you get skillful with that. But, you know, again, I think that once you have that moment where you come to yourself, then you start to identify ways to change your environment, you change your mind, you renew it with the word. And then, you know, your life will start changing and people acknowledge it. And the next thing you know, that, that new creature isn't just something that you read about something that, that you actually experience, you know? So again, another, another long answer, but right? the reality is that that looks different for, for so many people. Yeah, that's good, Josh. That's really good. Um, and I just like, I like summarizing stuff for me. If, if you're like me, I like recapping. So what I basically heard you say is that revelation precedes renewing and in that is before reconstruction. Because when we come to that point of revelation that we so, then it's like, okay, like, you know, that awareness light bulb comes on, like, oh shoot. You know what I'm saying? And now that I'm aware of it, I'm I'm consciously pushed to that place of acknowledgement. And then once I acknowledge it, now it's like, okay, this is the point of action. Like, do I do something different about it? And what does that look like? And then from that place, I can do something, you know, I can be more open. And at that same gesture too, that same phrase, is like the more I read the word and I adjust the things of God, the more God will start changing my environment or giving me that desire to change my environment. Mm-hmm. So it's just like, okay, like, dang, like I'm hanging out with these people, but my goal is this. You know what I'm saying? Or I'm doing this type and that's not really edifying me or the body. Or at the same time too, like, you know, that the Bible says that the flesh and the spirit wrestle. So it's like whatever mm-hmm. I'm looking for is going to win. So it's like, I can't expect myself to be feeding, you know, eating junk food all these days and then expect me to have energy all day tomorrow. Like, oh yeah, I'm gonna be good. I'm gonna pull an all-nighter. I'm gonna be out here. Like, no, like it just don't, it just don't work. Yeah, like, that's real. Like our bodies just can't process that. But when we do have these tools in place, like you're saying, and we kind of come to that point of awareness, acknowledgement, acceptance, and then move to action, like God will provoke us to change and everything else, which is really, 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 really good. It's a long answer, but that's the right answer because a lot yeah. of people, the renewal process you know what i'm saying like it's, it's all connected to our mindset and i think it's um i think i heard kira Shear say too one time she was saying that basically like you know even when it comes to like speaking stuff the more we speak it the more it starts to take root in our minds and you know it becomes a behavior which in turn becomes action but it's like we have to continue to you know build that process within our brain in our mental trenches and our mental rest and stuff and just our brain anatomy because like when we don't do that, we're going to continue to go on this road. And you're like, dang, I keep ending up here. But it's like you're not building no other neural network. So what do you expect? You know what I'm saying? Wow. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. So powerful, so powerful. So look, um, I want us to give some final thoughts. And then, Josh, uh, we're going to have you do a prayer of salvation because 
you never know who's listening. You never know this might be somebody's only way to get Christ. But um, I'll give the final thought first because uh, it's really relevant. I just had that light bulb go off as you guys were talking right there. But my final thought for the listeners is change your environment. Um, you don't have to be a part of this new age. You don't have to be walking the walk that everybody else is walking. Um, because transparently, many times when we see people doing something and we finally get to where we think we want to be, we walk in it and we say, wow, this ain't everything is cracked up to me. Man, I'm miserable. Or man, this isn't, this ain't it. So I would just say change your environment and start changing who's around you and start doing what he's telling you to, what to do. Because when you start walking in the, the narrow path, it's, it's challenging. Don't get me wrong. It's challenging, but it's worth it. And there's things that he's going to reveal that need to fall off and ways that need to change and habits that need to change and perspective that need to change. And when you surrender, when you truly give that yes, um, you could be one yes away for your life changing for the better. So I would just say change your environment is my final thought. That's good. Yeah, I would say, I would say mine will be, uh, I think going back to what Josh said, they said it in the very beginning like prioritize remembrance so no matter what we go through like not forgetting where we come through or forgetting past experiences no matter what it could be being seated city a position no matter what that is like not only like we should prioritize creating space for us to remember what god has brought us through but at the same time like i love how you mentioned like we should also um give holy spirit room to bring things into our remembrance like we we take all that responsibility and we're like dang i don't remember i keep forgetting amnesia amnesia forgetfulness blah 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 you know i did all this i drank i didn't smoke i didn't do all this stuff and it's like no nah, like the holy spirit can really help you like he's the gift so we should actually like fall like we do have responsibility to prioritize and do our due diligence you know what i'm saying but at the same time give him space to bring things back to us recollect yep that's well you know I, it's it's all it's tricky man I, if, if I had to summarize all of this, I would say, be yourself. You know, the way in which God created us, He created us with, with intention, with, you know, foresight. He created us with such fine in- intricacies. You know, from not only does He know how many hairs that's on our head, but He created us in ways that we can repair and heal ourselves. That if, if we're not eating right, the body adjusts so that we are using what we need even though it's not good for our lives because you know god created us in such a unique unique way and you know if if god is is that good for us and created us with all these nuances then i think we should be more aware that it's that we need to be ourselves you know and in our fullness and you know instead of looking at the phone and looking at social media and looking at other people's lives um, as a point of comparison you know I, I think that that outlook would always lead to the mind um, you know so on that note you know being yourself in the fullness that God created you to be and when you have those moments when you come to yourself you know that's when you realize that, that there are higher heights that you can travel to and that you can get to. Um, so be yourself and all the gifts that you need, all the you know capabilities that that's in you, it's it's there. You just gotta find what field it applies to. You may not it may not be technology. It may not be social media. You know, it may be therapy. <laughs> I mean that the reality is that we're all so unique. Um, and then and, and then even in the body of Christ. You know, some of us are eyes, others of us are, you know, feet, some of us are skin, but we all are a part of the body. You know, it all comes together at the end of the day. Um, And then one of the things that I live by at this point is, um, you know, some people plant the seeds, some people water the seeds, but at the end of the whole process, God gets the increase. So whatever role that I play, it's important for me to be myself. And whatever role that is in the kingdom, whatever role that is in my career, in my family, in my, you know, circles and communities, you know, just just own it. And, you know, as you explore with the Holy Spirit and as you learn and as you mature in, in the kingdom and in the body and physically, if you're, if you're a kid and you become a teenager, you become, you know, a young adult and now you're an adult, you know, every, every step of the way, there's always another point where you can learn and relearn and be yourself in a new way. I, I've evolved, actually. You know, in 
So I, 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 even in myself, have to relearn. But I don't compare myself and say, man, I should get this, sur- this reconstructive surgery. Mm-hmm. I've seen this, this dude over there. Oh, I need to get that. How to say, uh, the ben- beignet, not the beignet. The Beijing, the most technical <laughs> <head. laughs> You know, as a comparison, it's like, no, 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 no. This is how God created me. Let me own it. Let me be myself. And let me make these, these adjustments because God makes no mistakes. Yeah. And so... You know, on that note, that's that's how I would I would end that. Awesome, and I agree wholeheartedly with the guy. Don't make no mistakes. So, on that note, Josh, if you're okay with, we'll take him the next like two three minutes just to do a prayer of salvation, and we'll wrap episode one of season uh, four here. But if you could do that for us, lead us in that for anybody that's Absolutely. listening that needs that. Well, you know, Daddy, I love you, Lord. I acknowledge you, um, Holy Spirit. We we invoke your presence into whatever space we may be in whether we're in our cars, whether we're in our jobs, in our living room. Um, Lord, I'm asking that you meet us where we are. Um, Lord, you say in your word that you are married to the backslider. And for those of us that may be struggling with decisions on trying to live right or trying to, you know, fix mistakes, um, Lord, we know in your word that you will never leave us nor forsake us. So for that alone, God, we just want to invoke your presence in our lives. And for those that may be on this call who have never experienced you or what it's like to to know what your presence feels like, God, I'm asking that, you know, when you show up, there, there's a stillness, that there's a peace, that that still small voice speaks to each and every person that may be joining this call, Lord. Um, Father, um, we know in your word that you will never leave us nor forsake us. So for those that are having anxiety attacks, um, for those that are dealing with abandonment, um, God, for those that have also been dealing with rejection, um, Lord, these may be physical signs that turmoil is happening. But God, we know you to be a spirit. And we know that you are omnipotent. You are omnipresent. You can be everywhere at the same time. And you are all powerful. So God, my prayer, and that I'm touching the green with, with my brothers, is that you meet each and every person where they're at. And Lord God, I want to open up this opportunity to invoke the kingdom of heaven to everybody's life. Um, Lord, you say in your word that we should live heaven on earth. And what we understand about heaven is that there's no sickness, there's no disease, there's no confusion, there's no misunderstanding or lack. So God, I'm, I'm asking, Lord God, that you allow us to experience just this small, if not a big portion of heaven. And Lord, for those who don't even know you, I just want you all to repeat after me. Um, God, I am a sinner. I have fallen short of your glory. I may not understand where I'm at in my journey with you, but I want you to come into my life. Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross for my sins, that you were here, that you bore all the stripes um, on your back for my iniquities. And Lord God, that you not only died for me, but that you know, you died for me and that you've given me the victory in every area of my life. So, Lord, I want you to come into my heart. God, I believe um, and confess with my mouth that you are my Savior, that you are my King, and that I trust you with every step that I have to do next in this life that you've entrusted me with. Um, now that we're saved, Holy Spirit, I'm asking that you come into our lives as well. Um, take space in our hearts. Um, continue to help us to renew our minds. Um, Lord, we want to live in a space where we, you know, not only acknowledge you, but that we live this life day in and day out, knowing that we we are in this journey with you. Not against you, not against, you know, the, the powers of good, I mean, the powers of heaven. But Lord, we want to work together with the kingdom that you're established in our lives. Um, again, Lord, we love you, we adore you. Uh, we speak over our 2024. Um, we're asking that those gifts that you've given each and every person on this call and those that are going to experience this, um, that they just, that they step into it and that they know a little bit more about the kingdom about, and about you because of our conversation today. God, we love you. And we're on that route. We give you all the praise, and the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen, 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 amen. Amen. That's the unstoppable Joshua Lee, you guys. <laughs> well, look, um, man, what a start! What a start to season four. Yeah, thank you, God.
five. Let us start for season four. Yeah, so look, um, that's it, everybody. Uh, we're excited for the rest of the season. Keep tapping in uh, each week. We got more that's coming on the way. Uh, we say it, you know, at the, at the end of every episode, we'll say it real quick again. Um, how can you empower somebody else right here, right now? Please share this. People need Jesus. This is an awesome opportunity for you to just spread the word by just sharing. So please share this and help others come get Christ in a different way. Thanks for your time. Until next time, everybody. <laughs>